What you're really discussing is the establishment of we are a Christian nation. Yes, it is a Christian nation. There's a reason that judges and presidents and governors and historians and everyone else for 300 years said we were. Now, just because today we don't know what that is doesn't right. mean it wasn't true for three right. centuries. See, what they knew that we don't pay attention to today is that when this third period of Christianity came along, this period of Reformation, it resulted in massive changes across the world. Now, what was cool was when these Reformation-minded people came to America, they had something in America we didn't have in Europe. In America, they have come to a virgin land. They're not having to fight the apostasy of the last 12 centuries. Right. There's not been an inquisition over here. There's not been a corrupted form of Christianity. They get to plant the pure stuff right here on, on virgin soil, and so it grows really fast. One of the things you'll find that in every nation where the reformers were working to get people back to the Bible, one of the characteristics was they went to a republican form of government. You'll find the monarchies went away, republics rose. That's a characteristic of a Christian nation, is a republican form of government. It's what we have in America. It's a good thing we're a Christian nation. We like having a republican form of government. Where do we get that? The Bible teaches that you should elect your own leaders. Right. See, the, the divine right of kings, the monarchs were saying, hey, God's in the kings. There's six books in the Bible that deal with kings, Kings and Chronicles and Samuel. And by the way, we have King David and King Saul and King Solomon and Rehoboam and Jeroboam, and that's right. The Bible has a lot to say about kings. But the Bible also tells us that God sent the prophet Samuel to the people to say, you don't want kings. You know, like, bad, <laughs> bad idea. idea. Well, and he said, I'll give you a king, but they'll rule you. And, and they will. And, they'll rule you. and you know what was really interesting is he got specific. Yes. He said, here's what will happen to your military. Yeah. Here's what will happen wow. to your property taxes. He went through all these things that would happen if they got a, a king. They mm -hmm. said, we want a king. Well, the reformers come along and say, you know, we've had kings for 1,400 years. But that's not the way God wanted it first. Right. What was the first thing God wanted? Exodus 18, 21, choose out from among you leaders of tens, fifties, hundreds, thousands. So getting back to the Bible made us a Republican form of government. That's the first thing that came out of the Reformation. So a Christian nation in the last 500 years means you have a Republican form of government. I think everyone enjoys that. Yeah. Second thing is it was the Reformation that came up with separation of church and state. Everyone enjoys that today, too. We appreciate the fact that the government can't tell us how to worship or when to worship or where to worship, and that the church can't go to the government and say, execute this guy. He doesn't believe the right thing. Right, right. Right. Where did that come from? That came from the Reformation, getting back to the to biblical teachings. Mm -hmm. So that's the second characteristic. We appreciate that. The third characteristic was freedom of conscience. You see, every one of the Reformers, many were put to death for what they believed about the Word of God. Simply, simply their beliefs got them killed. Tyndall and Huss and other guys were killed because they wanted people to read the Bible in the common man's language. Well, if you don't allow freedom of conscience, then you can't get this other stuff out there. If you're going to have someone control what you think, where'd freedom of conscience come from? It came from all the reformers, all these Christian guys. So when you start a Christian nation, one of the things you find is freedom of conscience.